As we know, he's a high-profile fashion industry celebrity. David Wolf's wit, wisdom, and he has earned him the highly acclaimed, established uh, reputation. Here, everything's falling here. He is one of our uh, most... Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I did uh, discuss earlier about uh, uh, school business. Nothing is to be presented here for me to sign, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not going to repeat that and waste time. It's already almost quarter after. Well, anyway, David Wolf's background uh, is extraordinary because he's, uh, his talent uh, is just absolutely so good. For over 30 years, he has been the creative director of Doniger Design Direction. This is a division of Doniger Group, the world's largest privately owned buying office. You know this, I hope, right? Uh, good. So, the world's, uh, anyway, their clients range from Walmart to Nordstrom, and as director of the Doniger Group Fashion Office, David works with thousands of retailers and designers, which uh, earns the company billions of dollars. He is a native of uh, Ohio. Any Ohioans here? I ask that. I hope, I wish there were. They're good. His career started in a small town department store where he was the fashion coordinator, buyer, copywriter, fashion illustrator, and advertising director. Shortly after, he visited London and decided to remain there in the 1960s, which was one of the great periods of fashion. And in London, he was quick to establish himself as a fashion artist and he sketched uh, all the fashion shows, and he was working for Vogue, for London Vogue, Paris, uh, and uh, I'm not going to continue because I'm anxious for David to rescue me. I know he's one of the greatest, that's for sure. And uh, his uh, reputation in fashion is second to no one. So I will let him come and tell you about himself, if I left anything, and uh, continue with Saint Tropez. Thank you. Thank you. I'm delighted to be back and delighted to see you. And you were so good to me last week when I presented a whole sector of demographic information to you. And I think you were very brave to sit through all that. So this is your reward. Tonight, to this afternoon, we're just going to talk about glamour and fun and excitement and the French Riviera and the real reason that I have been so happy in my career forever and the reason you are probably all here. Because fashion is unlike just about any other profession. You know, if you wanted to be bored, you could become a dentist. And who wants to do that? Fashion, fashion, fashion with a capital F. People often ask me, you know, well, how do you know what's coming in next? Well, the way to know what's coming in next is to pay attention to what's happening now, to research what happened before, and keep your eye peeled for what's happening next. There are some tricks to the trade, of course, and one of the tricks is to go to the tiny village of Saint-Tropez on the French Riviera every single summer and check out what the people there are wearing. And believe it or not, it's a tried and true axiom. What the people in Saint-Tropez are wearing this summer will be what people the world over want to buy and wear next summer. It's been that way forever. I've been doing this trip, which is really one of the great perks of my job, uh, to go to the French Riviera and hang out for two or three weeks every summer. And uh, it has been this way forever. I'm going to show you a bit of the history of Saint-Tropez so you get an idea of this one little piece of the fashion jigsaw puzzle that is always so exciting. Uh, the Saint-Tropez scene is all about what's in the shops and what's on the streets. 
So we're going to look today at the trends, the colors, and the items du jour, the things that people buy and want to wear. Tracking trends in Saint-Tropez is uh, pretty easy compared to doing it in any other big city because Saint-Tropez is the size of a postage stamp, really. Then it was very, very exciting, and now it is still exciting. But like everything else in fashion, even this way of spotting trends has changed dramatically in the last few decades. This is what Saint-Tropez looked like many, many years ago. It still basically looks like this. I think, bless the French bureaucrats who must have ironclad zoning in this tiny little picturesque town because it has not changed a bit. It's still be absolutely beautiful. Now it became a fashion mecca late in the 1950s when this lady, Brigitte Bardot, made Saint-Tropez her headquarters for the jet set, sexy, fashionable, fabulous life. And she really put it on the map as far as fashion is concerned, as far as lifestyle is concerned. And ever since then, every single summer, absolutely everybody who is frivolous and loves luxury and fine wine and topless bathing and sex goes to Saint-Tropez. Who wouldn't go, right? This is what Saint-Tropez looked like last summer, very much the same way it looks every summer. It is beautiful, fabulous, luxurious, but it's different. Vive la différence. Saint-Tropez in the days of Brigitte Bardot and Saint-Tropez today are two very, very different places, just as New York, Paris, Milan, Rome, wherever fashion happens. It's not the way it was. It's different but it's still exciting. Here's the way it used to be. Saint-Tropez was like a wild place. I mean, just incredible. Party after party after party. In case you don't recognize her with her blonde hair and her bikini and her eyeliner, that is Brigitte Bardot sitting down there. And the thing I find interesting about researching old pictures from Saint-Tropez is that every single picture of a wild party, Brigitte Bardot is there. I mean, that was her entire life. She was known as the sex kitten, and she really was. If you've seen her now, she looks like a wreck. So she's really like paying for this life she had then. Uh, this is a picture I took last summer, OK? The wild parties are still going on. Brigitte, meanwhile, has retired to her villa up on the hills. Uh, she only is now interested in saving animals. Uh, and, you know, that, that's kind of sad. That happens to a lot of beautiful women. Are you aware of that? You know, they, they, they like use up all the men of their generation and they move on to animals. Uh, <laughs> years and years ago, Saint-Tropez was, was famous for attracting all the celebrities. It still does. Uh, here is a picture you may not recognize. This is Mick Jagger and Bianca Jagger on their wedding day in Saint-Tropez. Uh, one of the reasons that going to Saint-Tropez used to be so much fun is that you could see the celebrities close up. Bef now it's a tourist trap. But in the old days, only the jet setters knew about Saint-Tropez, and so you could you know, be having dinner and hanging out at the quayside and whatever with you know, all kinds of cool celebrities who were there all the time. They are still there now, but they don't come and hang out with mere mortals. They uh, uh, stay on their yachts or they hang out in their villas. And if they do come to town, they come to town with their bodyguards. So it's nowhere near as much fun. Uh, I think this guy's t-shirt kind of, you know, like says it all, you know. Uh, but we're always, you know, on the lookout for celebrities, and, they, and they, they do get there. Now, let me explain to you how Saint-Tropez works. It's a tiny, tiny little town about the size of a small, you know, shopping mall somewhere in America. And there are really only three streets, and one of the streets is right by the big bay where all the great big yachts come in and dock. So here's how Saint-Tropez works. You wake up in the morning, usually kind of late, okay, and you go to the beach, okay, that, and you have lunch at the beach, and there are fashion shows at the beach, and it's just all kinds of fun. And then, when you've had enough sun, you go back to your hotel, you get dressed in a fabulous outfit, and you come to town, and you parade up and down, around and around and around, while the fashion paparazzi take your picture. And you pretend you don't want to have your picture taken, but you don't stop walking around until every single person there takes your picture. 
And it's not only the, the celebrity hunters who are there, because they are there, and they're like beasts, these paparazzi guys who do this. But the fashion paparazzi are there, and we're, we're much nicer. We only want pictures of the trendy people. Uh, I also like the pictures of people who don't get it right, but I'm the only one who chases them. And uh, so, you know, it's just all kinds of fun. But what happens while these people are walking around and around and around is they shop. And they shop for the outfit they're going to wear tomorrow when they come to town and walk around and shop again and then go to dinner and then go to the nightclubs. And so it's just fabulous. So every, everybody, you know, is like, you know, on edge looking for, you know, oh, there's a trendy person. Oh, there's a possible celebrity. Like one day everybody just went crazy because they thought Victoria Beckham was in town. And so every skinny girl with long brown hair was like chased through town like fury. But I, I got the ultimate celebrity sighting. I saw Elvis. Well, I saw an Elvis t-shirt. So here is Brigitte Bardot with one of her many cute husbands. Uh, she had a knack for marrying cute men. But she also had a fashion knack. She put gingham checks on the map. In, in France, they're called Vichy checks. But she wore them. Her wedding dress was made out of gingham. Uh, she wore gingham on and on. And because she was really one of the first fashion pop icons, Gingham became a worldwide fashion trend throughout the late 1950s into the 1960s, and it has never, ever left Saint-Tropez. Every summer we can go there and see cool gingham stuff. Uh, here are two gingham evening dresses in the window of the Roberto Cavalli shop. Here, if you looked very carefully, this tiny, tiny little stretch gingham check on this adorable little mini dress. Another trend that also keeps recurring in Saint-Tropez is the military safari trend. This is back in the 70s when a guy in Saint-Tropez named Lothar made some safari clothes and jeans out of very, very lightweight cotton, not out of denim. It was, they were made out of sheeting, and they were sometimes dip-dyed, so they were like splodgy blue or splodgy salmon or splodgy forest green. And they became a worldwide craze. Uh, they, they had a store here on Madison Avenue, and it was just the biggest deal imaginable. They were very, very sexy clothes. This was the 1970s, when ever, before stretch, but when everything was skin tight. And the Lothar's pants were so tight that you could not wear underwear under the Lothar's pants, which made them really kind of extra hot. But that military safari look is still on the streets of Saint-Tropez here. Last summer, you can see both men and women still carrying on the military look, which has really become a classic or a basic in our fashion staples. I have to be honest with you. Not everybody in Saint-Tropez is trendy and beautiful. <laughs> they used to be. Uh, when I went there, you know, early in the 1970s, it was like shooting fish in a barrel. You could just stand on the quayside, and only beautiful people went by. Uh, that, was, that was really cool, and the reason for that is because of the retail pattern in France in those days. Still is this way to a slight degree, but not so much. In years gone by, the French national holiday, the entire country goes on vacation for the month of August. And years ago in Paris, that meant most of the little boutiques closed. So think about it. If you were the owner of a little boutique in Paris, would you buy much summer inventory? I don't think so, because you know you're going to be closed for the whole month of August. So that means that all the women who want their summer clothes have to go buy them somewhere else. And the coolest place to buy them is on the Riviera. And the coolest place on the Riviera is Saint-Tropez. So it was the big reason to go there and buy your summer wardrobe. Now in Paris, of course, most of the shops do stay open throughout August, although some of the small ones do chain, do close. But what's happened is that Saint-Tropez became so popular that now the good, the bad, the ugly all go to Saint-Tropez. And the ugly seem to come on buses. I've noticed that. You know, there's a big <laughs> civic parking lot and the buses pull in and these people get off. Uh, you know, but you know, you can get fashion tips from anybody, any place. Just look at this. You know, there we can say, okay, the boho skirt is still in. We could say, you know, menswear, you know, dark, short socks with shorts. That's very trendy. Now, <laughs> now, if Jean-Paul Gaultier did that on the runway, we would all think, oh, cool, you know. And, uh, but even, even these people are there to shop. This is what they shop for, though. <laughs> Souvenir t-shirts by the dozen. And then there are these people, the ones who try too hard. Now, I imagine that in their hometown, no matter where it is, they are like the coolest people in town. So they come to Saint-Tropez expecting attention, and they don't get it because they don't get it right. And Saint-Tropez is positively vicious because 
people there play the fashion game so seriously. Like, if you are carrying the wrong handbag, you may as well be dead. <laughs> if you have the wrong dog, and they change every summer, I'm not kidding. Like, every summer there is a trendy dog. I don't know what they do with the dogs who are out of style. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to think about that, but fur accessories are very big. Uh, so that happens. And you even have the trendy car of the season. So every summer, you know, you have to reinvent yourself if you come to Saint-Tropez. Now, it is a picture, postcard, pretty place. Now, I, I am no professional photographer, but I took these pictures, and I think they could be postcards. At the turn of the century, Saint-Tropez was an artist's mecca. Artists came from all over the world because the light is so wonderful, and they, they painted beautiful pictures. And, you know, there still are artists there. But the reason most people go to Saint-Tropez now is to see the beautiful people. And every year, the beautiful people are there, just generations after generations of beautiful people. And uh, there's always a new generation waiting in the wings, you know. You know in 10 years, she's going to be a hottie. Because Brigitte Bardot first put Saint-Tropez on the map as being a sort of place for babes, you see all these babe wannabes. You know, some of them a bit long in the tooth, but you know, they're still you know, laced into a corset and pushed up and blonded and, and stuff. So they're walking around just you know, being as sexy as they can possibly be. And uh, modesty has no place in Saint-Tropez, but that's okay because nobody there has a tan line, so it's no problem. The more perfectly suntanned flesh you can show, the better off you are. Now, Saint-Tropez is not the world capital of good taste. So every summer, there's plenty of glitter, glitz, and metallic. But this summer, there was more than ever because metallics worldwide are so important. And not just in accessories, which are always there. You can always get gold shoes and stuff in a gold handbag. But this summer, lots and lots of gold garments, or bronze garments, or platinum garments. Saint-Tropez has changed dramatically in the way people shop. Years ago, it was an adventure to go there because it was full of little tiny independently owned boutiques. And you were never sure what you were going to see each summer because many of the shops are seasonal and the shopkeepers just rent them for the season and then close them up. Well, now Saint-Tropez, like everything else, has changed and all the big guys are there as well. This is the Giorgio Armani store. This summer, Diane von Furstenberg opened a store there. So you can find all the big labels there, like Louis Vuitton and all of, all of Dior and Dolce Gabbana. But you still find sandwiched in between the tiny little shops and those are the ones to look at because these big shops have the same thing they have on Madison Avenue. So why bother going to the Riviera except to top up your tan and get drunk uh, and get laid? Okay, so yeah, you, you, well, you can do that on Madison Avenue too, I guess. So uh, what we go there looking for is what the people are wearing because what is so interesting is the fact that the fashion sensitive people are shopping every single day and they're all crammed into this little two block area. So you could, it's very easy to get a reading of what people are responding to or not responding to. And also the shopkeepers are very savvy. They know exactly why the fashion industry is there and the whole industry is there. You know, like uh, J.C. Penney sends a team of eight people to Saint-Tropez, you know, I mean, so you know, Walmart sends a team there, you know, Johnny Versace, uh, Valentino's yacht pulls in every day and Valentino goes shopping with his pugs. So at every price point, you know, from stratospheric designer down to Walmart, everybody is there taking the temperature of what's going on in Saint-Tropez. One of the wonderful things that goes on in Saint-Tropez, at first glance, may not seem to have a lot to do with fashion and retailing, but I think it does. Twice a week, from early in the morning until noon, there is an open market in the town square. The town square is empty the rest of the week. And then on these two mornings, Tuesday mornings and Saturday mornings, all hell breaks loose. And everybody from miles around comes to this incredible market. And it is just amazing because there you can you know, buy the wonderful fresh fruits of Provence. You can, uh, just the smell of the bread alone can make you get fat. Uh, it's just incredible. You can buy orchids there. Uh, you can stop for a little snack. You can buy antiques and art. Miles of olives. And all kinds of good stuff. The amazing thing is that you can buy fashion there. I would 
estimate that 30% to 50% of the market stalls sell fashion, sell apparel or accessories, and the people shopping there love the experience. And so many of the retailers that we are working with now at the Doniger Group around the world talk to us about how to improve the shopping experience. Because everybody's got the merchandise right when you think about it. We don't go shopping just to buy a t-shirt. We go for the ambiance, the music, the cute salespeople, whatever. You know? And I think this whole market experience is the reason that more and more retailers are giving you coffee, selling you food, you know, giving you a place to hang out. It's the experience. So interesting to me because so many of the market stalls in Saint Tropez are run by the little boutiques. And they close their boutique and just drag the stock out on rolling racks and put it in, out in the fresh air and sell more merchandise on those two mornings than they do most of the, the big guys like Dior and Dolce Gabbana don't do that, don't get me wrong. Uh, but, but maybe they should. But the, the other people do it and it's marvelous to see. Well, for one thing, you know, you dress differently when you're shopping in an open-air market. Here, these two, these two girls are shopping for new shoes. I love the market because it's different every summer. To my great surprise, this summer, there was like a hot onslaught of about a half dozen stalls selling brightly colored cashmere sweaters. Now, this is odd considering it was about 100 degrees, and women were buying armloads of cashmere sweaters. I soon found out why. It was virtually the only place in town you could buy color. Every other shop was all about white, all about black, all about neutrals, all about khaki, and people are hungry for color. So I think that's one reason that this was happening. But there were bigger crowds around some other stands. And again, you think about the psychology. Look at these women. It looks like a feeding frenzy, like they're giving something away. What it is is junk jewelry. Tons and tons of junk jewelry. Cheap. Five euros, your choice. That's like, you know, seven dollars. Okay? And it's fun. There were bracelets, there were necklaces, hardly any earrings, but bracelets and necklaces, all kinds of different colors, and people were wearing the mast. So to me, this was a sign that we are continuing to see the consumer have that decorative urge. She wants fancy stuff, she wants junk, she wants to have some fun, but she doesn't want to pay a lot of money for it. Let's talk about the trends in Saint-Tropez because that's what everybody goes there looking for. And they are loud and clear. They are not unique to Saint-Tropez. That's also something that I think is very important today because as we discussed last week, trends today are global and they overlap. So you simply look for different expressions of the given trend du jour. Trends today don't come and go the way they did. They ebb and flow. I think every year you want to buy military, you can buy military. But some years it's very fashionable, and some years it's not. But it's always there. Here are the trends we're going to talk about today. Aloha Hawaii, military, cowgirls, ethnic and exotic, and still more decoration and embellishment. Aloha Hawaii. This was such a big surprise to me. South Seas vintage style on the French Riviera. This is so unique because in the past, Saint-Tropez has often promoted a tropical look, as many places do in the summertime. But think about it. If you're in France, tropical would mean Tahiti, and that's what it always has meant in Saint-Tropez. So this was the very first year that they chose to honor an American state as the trendiest thing, but it was not Hawaii the way it looks today. It was vintage Hawaii, definitely, and it was spelled out loud and clear. There was no way anybody in San Tropez could miss this trend because it said, Hawaii, there, it says, you know, what does it say? <laughs> uh, paradise, oh yes, okay, paradise. Okay, this is a wonderful print on a man's shirt. It's all little travel labels in, uh, with Waikiki Beach and orchids. Here, wonderful little shell jewelry that's hand-painted with hula girls and the words Hawaii. Hawaii, spelled out in sequins on a tote bag. It doesn't have to be just Hawaii. Any island will do. Tiki, tiki, tiki. Well, tiki is a big trend in Europe at the moment. I don't know whether any of you collect tiki. It's a very strange thing to do, but there's this whole subculture of tikiness going on. And tiki bars, in case you don't know what tiki is, it was like a big 1950s fake Polynesian trend in America. 
And I think this really spells it out. Uh, a pair of men's shorts. Spirit of the Island by European. Okay, may not be grammatically correct, but you get the idea. What's important to remember is it's not Hawaii today. It is not Quicksilver. It is not Surfer Dudes. It's none of that stuff. This is vintage, long ago Hawaii. And it's another way to, you know, embroider palm trees on things, on blue jeans, you know, if you're uh, a classicist, on white blue jeans, if you know what's happening this summer. It can be very simple. Here's a wonderful Paul Smith t-shirt with a vintage hula girl motif. That's what she looks like close up. And of course, it meant prince, 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 lots of prince. This traditional, garish Hawaiian. This is not Tommy Bahama. Don't get it wrong. This is not like old guy golf wear. This is fun, technicolor, kitsch, kind of intentionally bad taste. And there are new ways to do it, too. It doesn't have to be vintage. Here are some new interpretations, new ways to place Hawaiian prints, new ways possibly to simplify them, including like that terrific Miss 60 print on the polo shirt on that guy on the right. The motif of the moment is definitely the Hawaiian hibiscus. Huge flower, you know, it, it grows, you know, in Saint Tropez just as it does in Hawaii, but suddenly it became the hot motif for printed accessories, for men's swimwear for women's swimwear, for tank tops, for just about everything you can name. Look closely at these necklaces with little hibiscus flowers painted on beads every once in a while. Hibiscus flip-flops. How about beautifully sculpted leather hibiscus on a shoe? And these aren't real. These are silk hibiscus, which were sold as hair clips. So the girls were all clipping flowers in their hair. I loved these ideas, the idea of embroidering a lei around the necklace. Uh, as if it's a necklace around the neckline of a top. The one on the right is a man's shirt, but I think it would sell beautifully to women as well. And the accessories, so much fun. Uh, impulse buying, uh, not cheap by a long shot. Over there on the right, you can see some of those flowers that the girls were wearing in their hair. All kinds of fun stuff, travel labels, you name it. All kinds of prints and shells. Of course, if we're in the South Pacific, shells and coral are going to be a hot motif for jewelry and trim. Uh, not a unique idea. We've got it going here in America, but in America, the things are very subtle. In Saint-Tropez, they hit you over the head. They were fantastic and creative and gorgeous and expensive as all get out. The second trend. Military marches on. We just, maybe this is going to last as long as our current war. I don't know. But it's non-issue military dressing. The fun thing about trends in Saint-Tropez is that there's nothing subtle about it. The people there love dressing up, and they do it head to toe. Not many people anywhere else in the world will wear, you know, the Hawaiian look head to toe or the military look head to toe. But in Saint-Tropez, they, they they have no shame. They just want you to know they know the trend, you know, and, to, and they hope you don't. So it's definitely a game of one-upsmanship. Well, one day I was standing on the quayside, and suddenly I heard this engine roaring, and these guys came zooming around the corner in their military clothes and their aviators, and, their, and then I realized their Jeep was nothing more than an accessory, you know, and they were really making this whole, you know, like military statement. Uh, the military things there, uh, you know, are just like they are everywhere else. Some are kind of basic, some are classic, and a lot of them are fashion versions of it, like that wonderful <laughs> little miniskirt updated with skulls uh, there on the right. Camouflage, camouflage, camouflage. Uh, we just can't seem to kill it off. I think most people today don't even understand that camouflage is a military print. They just think it's like polka dots or stripes or whatever, you know, it's just camouflage. Uh, and it's there in every garment imaginable. The newest colorways, of course, are the light desert or the sand desert colorways for camouflage, but there still is plenty of foresty stuff. The upmarket people are using the camouflage for newly shaped items or newly decorated items, and that's how uh, they kind of separate the different market tiers. Let's talk about cowgirls, because there's something about the French. They just love the American West. And this summer is no exception, and I really think this cowgirl connection is something that's growing in importance. Uh, I loved this shirt when I first saw it, although at first I thought it said PMS, and I thought, no, that can't be right, you know? Uh, and it wasn't right, but you know, we love the shirt. 
Uh, so here are just some of some of the cowgirl looks that are there. Certainly, you know, the cowgirl hat. You know, ever since Madonna put one on her head, you know, it's been all over the place. But in Saint Tropez, they actually wear it. And you know, cow cowgirl boots and short shorts. You know, <laughs> kind of a strange combination, but very sexy and hot looking. Uh, and some of the detailing looks straight out of the Wild West. I think this whole Western thing is something that's growing in grassroots movement, kind of slower here in America than in Europe. In East Berlin right now, fancy cowboy shirts at several hundred dollars are the hot selling item for young men. Uh, and if, if, you want to, if you want to research some great Western stuff, do you all know who Manuel is? Okay, had a show here at the tents. Not many people got it, but the tent was jammed. Manuel and his son, Manny Jr., uh, are designers of kind of country and western clothes that are so cool and so hot and so trendy. Uh, Manuel himself, who is now, now quite old, actually made Elvis Presley's jumpsuit. He made Johnny Cash's black shirt. He's dressed Dolly Parton. You know, he's, he has this long history. But the clothes they're making now are like kind of cool, western, very, very expensive club wear. So go on to style.com, look up Manuel, or, or go to their website, and you'll have a real treat in store. Uh, there's one kind of country and western item that's already hot in Saint-Tropez. It's being tested by people all around the world, but bib overalls are definitely already scoring points in Saint-Tropez, uh, usually in blue denim, sometimes in cotton, but, and often very short or mid-calf, worn by both men and women. And the new way to wear it is with the straps elongated as long as you can get them so the bib kind of flops around. The trendiest guy in Saint-Tropez, who never allowed anyone to take his picture, and I don't know why, because he was like such a show-off, uh, wore bib dungarees every single day. He worked one in, in one of the cool shops there. And he had elongated his straps so much that the back of his dungarees were actually at the back of his knees. So, and he was wearing cool boxer shorts every day. So it was really a bizarre look, but I, you know, go for it. <laughs> and of course, there were plenty of Cowgirl Connection accessories. These things look like, you know, they could have been carried around by Dale Evans in her prime. I was very surprised to see the exotic ethnic itinerary of the Far East still very, very important in Saint-Tropez. And this is the third year in a row we have continued to see exotic ethnic clothes. They provide a lot of visual eye candy, a lot of excitement. Uh, it doesn't really matter where the item is from, just so it's fancy and colorful and interesting and glamorous. In Saint-Tropez, third year in a row, this was the best-selling top. This top has not really made it in America, I think maybe because of its Middle Eastern connotation and we have a little problem with that. But boy, it's really flattering to everybody in Saint-Tropez. It's often sheer. It's worn as a beach cover-up. It's worn as a mini dress. It's worn with jeans. It's worn with shorts. And it's still always embellished. Prince, 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 and more Prince from faraway places with strange sounding names. Uh, I think last week I told you that my daughter has the best job in the world and she's our trend forecaster. That's my daughter in the middle with the cleavage there. Uh, she, of course she gets to hang out in Saint-Tropez even more than I do. And continuing this exotic theme, there are lots and lots of exotic jewelry that at first glance looks like it's an authentic souvenir from Tibet or you know, somewhere in Asia. It usually isn't. It's usually a costume jewelry re rework of costume jewelry, but that also applies to handbags and applies to footwear as well. The trend for decoration and embellishment is definitely not new, but it is not only alive and well in Saint-Tropez, but it's actually thriving. There's more and more of it. So this is very good for me because timing is the most important thing you can all learn in fashion. It's all about get, doing the right thing at the right time for your particular business, your particular job. And obviously, consumers all over the world are not ready yet to move away from decoration and embellishment. They just want new decoration and embellishment. I'm really worried that as an industry, we are cleaning up our act too quickly. Look at this. Great way to make a pair of new white jeans look fabulous. Now, all of this stuff is new this summer, but it could have been there last summer, which was all about decoration and embellishment. Still there, still selling. And it's selling at every price point. The white dress on the left costs a fortune. The one on the right costs 55 euros in the market. It's like you know, 70 bucks. And it's all beaded by hand in some it's third world country. There's a close-up of the beadwork and embroidery. Breathtakingly beautiful. 
but the decoration that is the trendiest at the moment has to look like loving hands at home. Needlework, cross, cross stitching, cruel embroidery. The idea, it looked, often looks Mexican or Latin American in feel, and again, it's part of this grassroots country feel. If you want a, a sneak preview of what's going on in the back of my mind for 2008, I think we are going to re-explore American country and Western as a worldwide trend, because all of these things are slowly but surely adding up. We've got Mexican embroidery, we've got cowboy hats, we've got denim continuing. Uh, so all of this stuff is going to converge, because it takes a long time for this stuff really to add up importantly. Here's the newest way of decoration and embellishment. Uh, you embroider something on fabric and then you cut it out badly with dull scissors and you sew it on to a garment badly and the edges are all frayed and ragged and that makes it look cool. Uh, th and that's the cool thing to do now. You're going to see a lot, a ton of t-shirts done this way. You're already seeing them now. You're going to see masses of them for spring 07. Uh, I, especially, I got a big kick out of that pink shirt on the top. I actually bought it and uh, when I was paying for it, the, the guy in the shop, you know, insisted on explaining to me that West Palm Beach is in Hawaii. <laughs> Skulls, of course, this has to die soon. <laughs> it's just got to. We've been tracking it now, I think for about 30 months since we first started seeing skulls explode in the trendy underground shops in East Berlin. East Berlin is probably the birthplace of most subterranean trends at the moment, so you, uh, if you're going to Europe, uh, get yourself to East Berlin. The thing I liked about the skulls in Saint-Tropez is that there was nothing scary about them, or goth, or punk. They were happy. They were, you know, they were silly, you know, skulls, and, you know, and so that's, that's just fine. And decoration and embellishment, of course, still continues to affect accessories. We like accessories with bells, whistles, flashing lights, anything you can put on accessories. We just love, and that's not going away. Prints are part of the trend toward embellishment and decoration because they're so busy, they're so colorful, they're so much fun to look at. And wasn't any one print message in Saint Tropez, it was just any print that looked special for men, for women, mixed up prints, romantic prints, dramatic prints, simplified prints. You know, lots and lots of printed shirts for men. Printed linen shirts were major. Printed boxer shorts, jams, and surfwear. And uh, <laughs> if one print is good, two prints are better. <laughs> now either this guy knows everything about fashion or he knows nothing. And I'm not sure which it is. I suspect he knows nothing. However, this kid knows everything. He worked in one of the cocktail bars right on the quayside, and every evening he would wear a different mix of prints and walk around and walk around and walk around. We kind of got tired of taking his picture. And finally, one night he came up to me and said, don't you like my outfit tonight? <laughs> so, so I took this picture. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about color in Saint-Tropez, because one reason that the fashion industry pays close attention to Saint-Tropez is that it's a very good color barometer. And uh, from what I saw in Saint-Tropez, I think color is at a very stylish standstill. We saw more white, we saw more neutrals, and then we had the surprise of some soft sorbet colors, but they were a real surprise. The bright colors were there, but they were embedded. They were only there as prints or accessories. Color is key to putting fashion together beautifully. I, I loved the way this woman looked. I think she got it so right. But let's talk about white. A thousand and one ways with white. Men and women in white, kids in white, every look you can imagine was there in white, every item was there in white, it was just white, 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 white. Uh, this, I found this very interesting because last summer white was also important, but it wasn't total, it wasn't a total white out. And the summer before that, it was black and white. And the summer before that, it was black with a little bit of white. And the summer before that, it was all black. So you can just track this swing of the pendulum, the rhythm of it. Uh, tracking fashion is kind of like tap dancing in a way. Once you get the rhythm right, you can just go with it. I thought this girl looked great, but I thought she was really stupid. <laughs> Who would buy a chocolate ice cream cone when they're wearing a white dress? Okay, but hey, she looks great at this moment. Okay, white, 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 white. 
hot again, hot for everybody, every age, people who know about fashion, people who don't know about fashion, people who are beautiful, people who are ugly, it doesn't matter, everybody got the white message. It was like a no-brainer. It was in all the windows. Uh, that's one thing that's so neat about Saint-Tropez. There are maybe mm, 40 stores, and somehow they all get together, and like one week all the windows in the whole town will be white, and the next week all the windows in town will be orange. One of the tricky things about trend spotting in Saint-Tropez is that you have to know exactly when to go, because there's a tiny, tiny window of opportunity. There are only about three weekends in the summer that matter. And lots of people don't know how to find those three weekends, especially some Americans who go over when they think, oh, you know, well, my business, you know, is allowing me to take a little trip. And they go there, and the town is full of fat German tourists, and they, don't, you know, they think, oh, trendy, what happened? You've got to be there exactly the right moment. You have to be there for the first weekend of the French bank holiday. And that changes every year because it's predicated by the timing of Easter. So typically tricky. So you have to, have to figure it out. And so, uh, of course, I'm always there at the right time. Uh, one thing I liked about the white was that I think it's, it was the beginning of the tip of the iceberg of minimalism, which we all know is coming sooner or later, and some of these simple clothes in white, often with minimal accessories, looked very, very right. But white can be anything. White can be romantic. Lots of frills, eyelet, lace, ruffles, frou-frou. And the hot item of the season, white jeans. If you knew fashion this summer, you left your blue jeans at home and you were wearing white jeans. Uh, people couldn't decide on the shape, to be honest with you, because there was a shortage of white jeans. So you could buy any pair of white jeans and it was okay. But as we go forward, you're going to want white skinny leg jeans. The only place I've seen them so far in any kind of depth is H&M, and they sold out almost instantly. So if you want them now, it's too late, okay? Which is why, you know, I'm embarrassed to be standing here in my white straight leg jeans, but pretend they're skinny, okay? I do. White often popped up as polka dots. Uh, on, on brown, like the pretty lady dress Julia Roberts wore years ago, uh, on, on black and on navy. The thing that's surprising about m these dresses is they're so ladylike. And Saint-Tropez is definitely a hot, sexy town. So the fact that there were ladylike dresses in little old lady polka dots appearing on the streets over and over is a sign that times are changing. And maybe that good taste thing I talked to you about last week is just beginning to happen even here. Neutrals, dark and light. Brown is definitely the number one color again followed by tan, olive, and gray. Very, very natural. And I think one reason that the natural palette seems to be hanging on so long is that we are very interested in this ecological movement. We love things that seem natural. And what could be more natural than neutral color? Here, the chocolate brown that has been a number one or number two selling color for retailers all around the world for about a year now continues to be a major choice. What makes it look different there is it's often combined with white. So it was replacing black. All of these people would have probably been wearing the same thing last summer, but it would have been black and white instead of brown and white. And there were brown and white prints, of course, too. And the rest of the neutral color palette, nothing new about that. It's here in depth everywhere, you know, from Banana Republic to you name it. It was also there in all of the home furnishings shops. Uh, Saint-Tropez has a half dozen really cool home furnishing shops, and I always shop them because I think there's a big crossover and cross-pollination between fashion and home furnishing now. And after about the fifth shop, full of neutral colored furniture and accessories, I was getting real, real bored. And I realized that the consumer is also going to be getting bored and want a hit of color in their homes and in their wardrobes. So I was excited to see a few soft sorbet colors. But they were only there for the men. Just so surprising, these wonderful new pale brights. And they were there in creative color combos. This is what they look like. They, they look like sherbet sorbet ice cream, you know, pale tangerine, pale mint, pale, pale cherry, uh, pale sky blue. Look at this picture carefully because we kept seeing it over and over. The men in the picture, and these are not cool guys, let's be honest here. They, they were wearing color. And the women they are with were wearing black, white, navy neutrals. And it happened over and over again. The cool guys were wearing these wonderful soft colors in printed linen shirts, in wonderful silky t-shirts. Striped shirts were updated in these soft sorbet colors. 
The young guys in Saint-Tropez, the show-off guys, uh, you can tell he's a show-off, uh, were wearing pale, pale pink. It was the hot color for young men. And this was interesting because just a few months before, in Barcelona and in Paris, hot pink was popping up on the streets. But once these cool guys got to Saint-Tropez, they all bought pale pink. And men aren't supposed to be able to put colors together, but these pale colors go together in a no-brainer kind of way. Here you can see some of the interesting combinations that we saw on real guys and also in the store windows. The real bright color was embedded. It was only there in prints and in trims and in accessories, but they were bright and mid-tone accents, and people were buying them like crazy because I think they were hungry for a hit of color. So we did have them in accessories. We had them in some of those wonderful prints that I showed you earlier. Let's talk about what's hot now. Let's pretend you're in Saint-Tropez with me and we have all the money in the world and we're going to go shopping, okay? Here's what we'd buy. And you have to remember that what's hot this summer in Saint-Tropez is always hot everywhere next summer. So sometimes it's even the item that's hot this summer and you know it's going to be hot again next summer. So the first thing we're going to buy is something you probably don't already own, vintage resin and novelty jewelry that looks like it's from the 1940s or 1950s. So that would be a new item on your shopping list. We're going to buy you super skinny jeans, whether you're a guy or a girl. Uh, it's happening. Uh, the denim industry is, is uh, the denim industry worldwide is like a small town filled with gossips and they are they they panic they're like henny penny the sky is falling all the time and the latest reports that just went across my desk were oh my god the skinny jean has failed this at the same time i'm getting reports that the skinny jean has sold out so <laughs> so you have to really analyze some of some of these uh, things that are going on of course the skinny jean is a new item and most people are going to buy the skinny jean next year after they've seen the school people the cool people buying it this year but of course, lots of people aren't going to make it next year because they didn't sell it yet this year. So it's very tricky. So go ahead, buy your skinny jeans, make sure they're low rise, buy them in blue, buy them in white, do not buy them embellished. Shorts, lots of short, short shorts on everybody. City shorts of all lengths and short shorts. Casual dresses. Now, this was very interesting to me. We saw lots and lots of wonderful casual dresses in Saint-Tropez, but very seldom did we see anybody wearing them. I think the women of Saint-Tropez didn't quite get the idea that these were casual dresses, that these were sportswear dresses to wear you know, just anywhere. And uh, so that's going to take a while for that message to catch up. Tiny little jackets, little military jackets, little band leader jackets, tiny little couture shrunken jackets. And the embroidered shirt, this essentially for men, but we started seeing some embroidered shirts for women, and I think it's going to become a hot item for women here in America. Full skirts, this replaces last summer's boho gypsy skirt, all kinds of different full skirts. All the skirts had movement. And in Saint-Tropez, interestingly enough, they were usually knee length. And just last week here in New York during Fashion Week, they were micro, micro, micro mini length, but they were always full. So I think this is indicative of that movement toward more interesting shape. And finally, the item you cannot leave Saint-Tropez without, a pair of huge celebrity sunglasses uh, worldwide. You know, The only difference is you can buy them here on the street for 10 bucks, and in Saint-Tropez they're about 300. Let's talk about megatrends. Because all these trends we've talked about up till now have been the little tips of the iceberg. Let's put them all together. Okay, there are two big things happening. I call this one God Dress America. Because inspiration for fashion is coming from the Western Hemisphere. I don't understand why this is happening, but it's curious and it's interesting. At the very moment that most of the world is not loving America, in case you didn't know, uh, Fashion is embracing America all over the European trade fairs, Barcelona and Berlin, bread and butter, Paris, who's next? Uh, lots and lots of ideas that are grassroots Americana. So Ed Hardy is selling all over the world. Blue jeans, the greatest thing that America ever invented in terms of fashion, continue all over the world. We've got the Western look bubbling up. The trade fairs, we saw a lot of Mexican motifs, even just the word Mexico printed on things, and the vintage Hawaiian that turned up in Saint-Tropez. So you just can't get more American than that. The second megatrend is the strangest one for America to wrap its mind around at the moment. Happiness is the new hip. 
because we at the moment think that down out, ugly, worn, torn, black, dreary, goth, scary is as cool as it gets. Well, that's how it is in America right now. But Europe is already a heartbeat ahead, and they are now finding ironic escapism in fun fashion. So it's not that they feel good and happy, but they're wearing bright clothes and cartoon prints and things like that. And you're going to see there will be a lot more of it in Europe for sp spring, summer, 07. And they're wearing it as a sort of ironic statement. When they're wearing a pink sweatshirt that has Bambi on it, they're not saying, oh, I feel sweet and young and innocent. What they're saying is the world is going down the toilet. And this is my anti-statement. This is why I'm against what's happening in the world. Uh, like this woman is typical. She was wearing the silliest necklace. You know, I mean, absolutely stupid. And when we stopped her, she was just delighted to have us take a picture of it. And she, she was wearing the joke. Okay? <laughs> you know what I loved about these guys? Well, they're all cute. That's okay. They all have good legs. But as, that aside, these same guys on the streets in Saint Tropez last year would have been wearing torn jeans. They would have been wearing a black t shirt that said fuck you or something on it, you know? <laughs> So now they're dressed in a giddy, happy, silly way. And I think that is such an interesting, challenging statement that America is going to really have to struggle to come to grips with because we're so locked into the worn, frayed, depressed shop in the dark at the Abercrombie store. <laughs> Look at these people. They're beautiful. They're not scary. Cool people in America at the moment are pretty scary, OK? These people are the ultimate in cool because they're optimistic, they're suntan, they're healthy, they're sexy, they're sweet, smiling, happy, and boy, are they trendy. Why not wear something silly? Like koala bears on eucalyptus trees printed on your boxer shorts, okay? Or just have fun with fashion, like this woman who is wearing hot pants that say a cartoon phrase on the back. And she's wearing them with her green cowgirl boots. And she's carrying her Louis Vuitton bag. She's just saying, what the hell? You know, and I think, you know, that's the fun of fashion. And that's, you know, the fun of going to Saint Tropez every summer. And that's why I go there. And I hope I can come back next summer and show you what they're wearing next summer. Thank you so much for inviting me again. <laughs> Okay, I think we have, we have a couple minutes for a couple of questions if you, and no, you can't come with me next year, <laughs> unless you pay your own way. Anybody? Yes. Oh, yes. Uh, the question is, are, are the independent boutique owners still renting out spaces? Yes, they are. But now, now they're fighting, you know, the great big guys. Uh, but I, th I think, you know, they do a much more interesting job and they do a lot, uh, they do a lot of business. Anybody else? Okay, thank you very much. Mm -hmm.